Shoot the Breeze prompt number seven is, does the Atlantic slave trade make economic sense? This came with a link. Let's check it out. And then we'll discuss it. conversation that I think is a fascinating one, the conversation of reparations, because there can be no doubt that something horrible happened to the black community and they're still suffering from it, Mm -hmm. especially in the deep south. When you look at these places where the people who lived are the direct descendants of slaves. Yeah. And then these are the same impoverished neighborhoods that no one's ever done anything to try to fix. Right. So how do you fix it? Uh, You first have to. Of African-Americans that lived here were brought over here. No, no. No, that's that's not economically sound. What do you mean by it's not economically sound? Like there were uh, slave say, ships, right? All right, let's say you wanted to have uh, you wanted to sell marijuana, right? Right. Would you uh, import marijuana? Or would you grow it here if it's already here? Well, it depends on whether or not marijuana grew here. Well, can I mean, you grow marijuana here? You can, but okay. th- we're just talking about marijuana. Like, what if so, we're talking so, so, about something that you can't grow here? So, so what I'm saying is. People were already here. Does it make sense to go all the way to this other continent to bring people on the boat when we know that half of your stock is going to (laughs) die? You wouldn't do that. So how many people do you think were brought over from Africa on slave ships? Because that definitely happened. uh, I don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? I don't believe that story. You don't believe that Africans were brought over on slave ships? Correct. I believe it may have happened, you know, maybe people were brought over as slaves, but I don't think that the black people in America came from Africa on slave ships. I believe the people that were here were slowly conquered. First, they got the East Coast and then they started spreading out West little by little conquering. And when you conquer a tribe, what do you do? You enslave them. They're POWs. Right. Okay. that's what you do. So you after you conquer this tribe, you 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 make them slaves. Now, how do you conquer the natives here? So let's say you got this tribe is warring against this tribe. Well, this tribe goes talk to the white man. White man says, yo, if you help me wipe out these people, then boom, you know, I'll help you with whatever, whatever. So they get together and they wipe out this other tribe. Now, guess what? The white man now outnumbers this tribe. So he wipes them out. You just kill two birds with one stone. You just keep moving like that. But I'm still confused. There's a great history of slave ships being brought over from Africa Mm -hmm. with Africans that became slaves Mm -hmm. and worked in the South. Mm -hmm. Do you you think that's lies? History is his story. Right. What about my story? Is my story not valid? But if you do 23 and Me on someone who is <laughs> from these parts of the country, you'll find out that 23 they, and Me. Well, that's real. So, so what if, is 23 and Me? Is so that, when, when I when I when I take uh, a 23 and Me test, right? Yes. What's it going to tell me about Africa? That's a good question. We should find it's out. Probably going to say, one. "Oh, you're from Kenya, or you're from Angola, you're from yeah. this, this, right? Right. These things, these borders, were created by Europe. In terms, you, yes, right. In terms of like what parts of Africa and how it's distributed, and what's a country and what's not a country. Yeah, right. these by names, the Afrikaners and Dutch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can't classify me based upon a European name. I understand that, but they're saying geographically, mm-hmm. geographic location. You can call it whatever name you want. Right. They can tell you where your genetics originated. Like right. I've got some weird shit in me. I got like one percent Asian. I don't know why it's there. One point six percent African. Okay. There's also the weird stuff that you find in your DNA that like your ancestors and ancestors, ancestors. Right. So let's was walk somewhere. down there. Let's walk down that right. path, right? So either way, if you take black people here in America mm-hmm. and you do their DNA sample and it point back to Africa, what does that say? It says black people in America are Africans. Now the argument is. Were we brought here or were we already here? Did we bring ourselves here or did the white man bring us here? You see, when you say the white man brought us here, what you're doing is you're removing our ability to transport ourselves. You're saying, oh, we didn't know anything about boats. That's what you're trying to tell me. You're trying to tell me that we didn't know that there was a landmass here. The Only the, the holy white man knew there was land to the west. But when you look at the holy white man, he said, when we got here, we met black people. Go look at the, the primary source. You got here, we met black people. When we got to the Caribbean, we met black people. You think the Caribbean is right next to America and they weren't in America? That's interesting. 
that doesn't but make I, any sense. Well, if you go it to South makes up, sense that you do have people that have traveled, whether it's Polynesians that traveled to Hawaii or mm -hmm. people. I mean, there's the Olmecs uh, who yes. were thousands and thousands of years ago in South yeah. America. They have purely, uh, clearly African faces. Yes. On this, I mean, really, the, the noses, the lips. I mean, they look African. Right. And that was a South American culture that existed. And we don't know anything about them other than the fact that they have these gigantic stone sculptures that have African faces. Well, like, again, again, just go to if you can pull up the ocean currents. Mm -hmm. um, if you no, up, I've, I've seen that. You've yeah, seen yeah. that, man. Well, you, do you know who Graham Hancock is? I've you heard read, about him. Yeah. You read his stuff. It's really I fascinating got because he's all about that. He's all about the fact that the idea that human beings were probably living in advanced civilizations far longer than 14,000 years ago. And yeah. they, they did travel all over the world and that you do find the remnants of these ancient cultures that we have no explanation for throughout the Amazon, yeah. you know, and throughout different parts of, of uh, South America and Central America. I mean, when you go and you look at real European history, mm -hmm. right? you had the Magyars would believe that if they took a bath, it was bad. Right. They didn't even want to change their clothes. They they thought that dirty was purity. When we talk about the Moors going into Spain and into Europe, the stories in the history, our history, says that when we met the so-called Caucasian, he was sleeping in the barn with the animals. And we told him, no, you can't sleep in the barn with the animals. We taught them etiquette. We taught them running water. We brought that technology to Europe. Now, if we brought the technology to Europe that saved Europe from the Black Plague, you mean to tell me that if we saved the white race, that we weren't already in America already? When we brought the technology, when Rome was dependent on Africa for food, remember when the Black, pl black Plague hit Rome, the cause was uh, one of the uh, officials was stealing the grain that was coming from Africa. So there was famine hit Rome. If your source of sustenance is from Africa, how are you superior? You're not. You get your food from me. So if you get your food from me, who's more likely to travel this globe? Me, I'm the source of food. And that's the first thing you need to survive on this planet. So if your whole civilization is depending on me to, pl to, pl to depending on me to supply food, I made it to America first. Well, it's just that you won the war. Rome, you got but, to tell the story. Is that their only source of food? I mean, it's a source of food that Rome had, right? But Rome is also very close to Africa. Well, let's talk about that. What yeah. kinds of food did they have? Well, I don't know. It's a very rudimentary. It was a very rudimentary uh, civilization. It wasn't all uh, what is cracked up to be. When you go look at what the Greeks said about Egypt, when they go into Egypt, it's like, yo, it's like the well, New Egypt York City of that time. The ultimate. If, if you really want to talk about African civilization being advanced, Egypt is the ultimate. Because right. Egypt to this day is still unexplained. No, right. one, no one really understands how they built those things. No one understands the, how old the culture is. That's another thing that Graham Hancock and mm -hmm. Dr. Robert Schock from Boston University, who's a geologist, he's pointing to water erosion and the, mm -hmm. the Temple of the Sphinx that leads you to believe that that place might have been as old as 9,000 plus BC. So, oh, it absolutely you know, is. Yeah, well, if not older, you know, yeah, going back they, to Pharaoh Ramses. There's also different styles of architecture, right? There's right. older styles of architecture they find deeper in the sand. They think it might have been indicative of an earlier kingdom. And then mm -hmm. there's also the Nubian structures of some of the yes. faces particularly the Sphinx. Yeah. You know, the Sphinx, they believe had a lion's face. And then when they were conquered by the Nubians, they changed the actual structure of mm -hmm. the face of the Sphinx oh. and turned it into uh, a, a king's face. Well, the way it was taught to me face. was that you know, there's upper and lower Egypt. So uh, upper Egypt is actually our new South, right? That's our South. Mm -hmm. And what, what the way it was taught to me was that was the mind of Egypt and the economic section of Egypt was what we see Giza pyramids and it's economic because if you look at it, it sits between three continents on the Mediterranean sea. So it's a perfect place to carry out commerce. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect place. That's why everybody wants to be there. That's why there's a war in the middle East. Cause it's a perfect place to be. You know what I mean? So do you believe that some Africans came over here in slave ships or none? Very minimal, very minimal, really very minimal. So you think it's a myth? Almost. Now, does there any scholars that support these opinions? Are these your opinions? Or the, where are you getting this from? So here's the thing. 
this is stuff I've studied probably close to 15 years ago. So I don't remember a lot of my sources or who I learned it from, but I can give you a couple of names. What you got to do is you got to look up Shaka Akmos. You got to look up Dr. Kaba Kameen, Dr. Phil Valentine, Bobby Hemet. Uh, who else is a good Egyptologist? Uh, Shaka Akmos is a real good Egyptologist. I think you should start there with Shaka Akmos. But um, these are these are videos I used to watch and lectures I used to watch back in the day. Now I focus on like startups and that's where my brain is. Mm -hmm. That's where my knowledge is focused on. Right. But a lot of this stuff comes from my own common sense. It just does not make sense logistically to take people from all the way from over there to bring them here, especially when half your stock is going to die when you got people right here. You have human resources right here. All I got to do is pop them, shoot a couple of them. The rest of them are like, all right, fine. And you enslave them. And none of them die except for the ones I actually killed. Right. I got a whole millions of people right here. Like, why would I go all the, cra all the way across the ocean to bring people back across the ocean? It just, just doesn't make sense. It's just stupid. That did nobody run a business like that. What's up, Jamie? Uh, PBS. How many? The title was how many slaves landed in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Well, scroll that up. Scroll it up so I can read that whole thing. Okay. Right to there. Perhaps you, like me, were raised essentially to think of the slave experience primarily in terms of our black ancestors here in the United States. In other words, slavery is primarily about us right from the Crispus attacks and Philip Wheatley, Benjamin Banneker, and Richard Allen, all the way to Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. Sojourn Truth, and Frederick Douglass. Think of it as an instance we might think of as African-American exceptionalism. In other words, it is the black experience. It's got to be about black Americans. Well, black Americans will think again. The most comprehensive analysis of shipping records over the course of slave trade is the transatlantic slave trade database edited by professors David Eltis and David Richardson. While the editors are careful to say that all the figures are estimates, they believe that the best estimates that we have, the proverbial gold standard in the field, the study of the slave trade between 1525 and 1866 the, in the entire history of the slave trade to the new world, according to the transatlantic slave trade database, 12.5 million mm. Africans were shipped to the new world. Mm. 10.7 million survived mm -hmm. the dreaded middle passage disembarking in North America, the Caribbean and South America. Mm -hmm. How many of those 10.7 million Africans were shipped directly to North America? Mm -hmm. Only about 388,000. That's right, a tiny percentage. So a small percentage of all the Africans that were enslaved were actually shipped to North America. That's probably closer to the truth. Hmm. They ain't come from Africa, bro. That don't make no sense. Nobody would run a business like that. Well, they, they're saying that a lot of people did, though. That's 10.7 million people. Came on boats? That's what they're saying. That's well, they were in the slave, slave trade. trade. I don't know if that means that they necessarily came here. They could have been going to Europe. They well, could no, have no, they were the saying Caribbean. that. They were saying that it was in the Caribbean. The slave trade does not have to come from Africa. I can trade with you right here in America. But was it? Why it said, they, no, it said to, directly to North America is only the f under 400,000. Right. Right. Involved in the shipping and going all over the world. It, it could be going anywhere. But right. from Africa. That's correct? less than 10%. African shipped. Yes. Right. That's yeah. less than 10%. Less than 10% in North America, but 10.7 million Africans enslaved 12. and moved. Well, yeah. 10.7 mm -hmm. survived, right? Mm -hmm. Were, sh were shipped, but it didn't say where they were shipped. It's just right. to the new world. The new world is very Vague. arbitrary. And yeah, only 388,000 actually Came made it to, this, to this, North America. Yeah, this land. I could trade so, from Haiti or Jamaica or South America. Right. So you think, that, yeah, right. So you think that there was probably already a significant population of Africans that were sea bearing mm -hmm. that made it all the way over here. Yes. Well, if you listen to the words of Hancock and the, the discussion of prehistoric, what we would consider prehistoric use of boats and ships it's probably likely right look at ancient egypt don't you see pictures of boats oh yeah oh yeah so well, they would bury them i mean if you could there was the um what is the big science uh museum in la that had the the egypt uh exhibit really recently it's fucking incredible but yeah. they they had a depiction of the boats that they used yeah i mean they had boats for sure they, had they boats. definitely traveled so so how can you tell me that a civilization had boats before Europe was literate, didn't come to America, didn't set up shop. It's just not common. I mean, just I don't need to read a book to understand that. Well, it definitely makes sense if they made it to South America. I mean, if the Olmecs were, I mean, if you look at, you pull up a, an image of uh, the Olmec heads. This is 
heavily yeah. disputed. John but, Henry Clark is the author you should study. John Henry Clark has a book, They Come Before Columbus. I mean, look at that. Look at these Olmec heads. Yeah. They all look like that. Yeah, that's South America. Yeah. So it's if kind you, of if you have amazing. You, there has to be a large population of people in order to create these things. Right? Yeah. It has to be, you know, these have to be advanced. So if they're here already in South America, why are you going to go across the sea when you got people right here? You get just enslaved. Mm. South America is connected to America. You think we didn't come up north? You think we didn't take that whoop? Right. It's just common sense. Well, particularly when they're finding all this evidence of people that were here thousands and thousands of years before they ever thought people were. Yeah. Yeah. Or the evidence in the Grand Canyon from Egypt. What? I yeah. didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Is uh, you heard about that? Part of it, yeah. yeah. What is there it? might be some gold down there. Ooh. Yeah, is, is this Egyptian oh. gold in the Grand Canyon? Hey, hey. Imagine if they found a fucking Egyptian tomb in the there, Grand Canyon. There's Egyptian stuff that's been found in Ohio. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, I was looking there. some stuff up, but the grandma's telling me I went home and looked up the Serpent Mound stuff, and like right up the road from where the Serpent Mound is, there's been a couple artifacts found there, like Egyptian years ago. artifacts. Yeah. They call mounds. Pull, pull that up. Yeah. yeah, there's mounds in America, which yeah, supposed to be like pyramids or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's even an Egypt, Ohio. I don't think it's named <laughs> after that, but it's literally like in the same spot. Wow. Yeah. I don't. I, yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 this. This. The history, history of human travel is fucking fascinating. We've man. circumnavigated this globe before, man. This this isn't new stuff. It's new to Europe. It wasn't, it wasn't new, new to Africa. Africa. Yeah, I think we get the idea here. That video is titled Africans were in the Americas before Columbus. And that's Hotep Jesus. Uh, I know D Webb, I think, is down with Hotep Jesus and them as well. So um in the chat. Marcus Gavi's way says 10 black folks on a slave ship can make 10 kids each. Now we have 100 people. It's math. Um, she says a few times, and she says breeding farms were made because it was necessary for more folks. She said Haiti and Jamaica didn't have Africans originally. Mr. Untouchable in the chat says this guy either has black athletes on his show or black head cases. This guy is a nut job. Um, Marcus Gavi is way says pyramids were not predominantly in Egypt. And lastly, Mr. Untouchable in the chat says he watches too much Sanetta Studios pseudo Brooklyn Magic Street scholarship. Let's mix it up. Let's go to Mr. Untouchable. Mr. Untouchable, say more about this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know who is the author of this from. And I would say that the, the scholars that he mentioned are questionable, you know, to say the least. You know, uh, all of them, you know, uh, from Sh Sh Shaka Amos, which he is an intelligent dude, but some of the things I, I would find to be questionable and the others that he would have mentioned, I, I consider them brothers to be completely pseudo scholars. You know, I, I know he's getting this information from. He has been watching a lot of Sarnetta TV, you know what I mean? And them, <laughs> I, I don't this 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 just outright disregard street scholarship. I think that the brothers read for themselves, but sometimes it, it, with interpretation, sometimes there need there needs to be more work done. I'm not saying that all information needs to come out of so-called formal academia. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the, uh, the information that he is getting is is not enough. You know what I mean? And, and he almost sounded like Dan Calloway. You know, I, I was expecting him to say, "I'm just here to make you think." You know, so I, I, I completely disagree with this man. You know what I mean? I think that really the crux of what he is saying is that he he really want to say, to be honest with you, he an African. Really, that's really the crux of what he want to say. Or I understand the pain of slavery. I understand that people really don't want, a lot of us in the West don't want to associate ourselves with that narrative. But it happened. You know what I mean? Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it and move on. I think that if we was to look at slavery itself, it, it's not a negative. It really shows the resilience, resilience of people. You know, the what they say with, when people came to Haiti, they say that life, the life expectancy was seven years before they replace, replace the, the slaves coming into Haiti. You know what I mean? So people who would have survived that experience have to be really the fittest of the fittest. You know what I mean? You can't just uh, live through that experience without um, 
without getting a whole lot of uh, substance from that situation. You know what I mean? I think that we are the most uh, um, strong, some of the strongest people on the face of this earth to have the endure that experience. And I feel like we tend to want to run, run, run away from that experience and pretend like it don't exist, but it exists. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with our situation. And let's move on from it because we could become greater people out of that situation. You know, let's not obfuscate it and pretend like it doesn't, doesn't exist. And I think that this, I think that, um, what's his name? His name is Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is infamous. Joe Rogan seems to have, he only has or entertains um, athletes on his show or men like these, these kinds of men. You know what I mean? These nut, nut cases. But when it comes to the white intellectuals that he has on the show, all professors, you know what I mean, high acad high in academia, you know what I mean, you know, peer reviewed people, you know, and I think it have to, and, and people call him a leftist, but I think it has to do with, with his his so called white supremacist leanings, you know, it's interesting the, the, the dynamic of who he invites on his show to talk about science and 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 history and all these other uh, things of affair. He does have. Uh, a black guy who who he credits, I forget the name of the guy, um, uh, the Gray, nice Neil Tyson. Yeah, Neil Neil um, deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, but if you look at uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he is really, you know, he's on that train, and I ain't gonna call him any names. But any real black authentic scholars scholars or scholarship, he he doesn't have him on his panel. You know what I mean? You know who who carries the line of any anything involved. To do with some kind of Afrocentricity or some something to do with I'm black, I'm proud, I, I have the back, I have the backing of my own personal academia, academia and scholarship. I'm intelligent, I'm sharp, just like any of my peers. He doesn't have these kinds of people on his show. He only has athletes and nutcases like these, and I find I find it to be very interesting. Let's go to um, the forecast. The forecast. What say you? Forecast, you're muted if you're still there. If not, let's go to Tanzan. Tanzan, what say you to this? Yeah, it's one of those um, trying to get away from, you know, the white but not wanting to go to Africa. It's like you want to be in the purgatory between one or the other and you're not willing to go all the way. So a lot of... You know, you know, Black Americans have gone that halfway house, you know, from NOI, now they're into, I don't know, Scientology, Hebrew, whatever. It's just, you know, anything but African, like uh, we say. So, you know, this is also part of that, you know, we, we, cutting the, the lineage. That, you know, it's not about lineage, it's about severing that historical lineage. It's about actually putting yourself in a different position and saying it's almost like a, a virgin birth. You just magically appeared out of nowhere. And while I, I do, um, I, uh, I applaud the, you know, oh, Africans who have been everywhere, that sort of thing. And I know that Van Satima and so many of our uh, greats, they, they talked about that, you know, the African presence all over the world. But I think for a lot of people, that's a sort of escapism. It's not a way for us to celebrate our African roots. It's almost a way to get away from it, to say, oh, well, we, we don't have to claim Africa because look at these branches over here. You know, this is just as African as the other one. So, I, uh, you know, if they, you find some black people in Siberia, then, yeah, well, let's claim uh, Russia. If you find some black Chinese, oh, yeah, let's claim China and so on, but it's a very few of those people are very far you know, to go back to Africa, even for Africans, because even the people who live in Africa are not really Africans. To go back to Africa, you really have to grapple with a lot of you know things. You, you don't just get to Africa and say, okay, yeah, I'm cool with Africa. I've I've got into the core of things. Now I want to see what the African Philippines are on about. You know, it's yeah, it's too soon. It's you, you can't tell me that that sort of instinct is is a true. African instinct to get to the bottom of Africa is to get away from Africa. So when I see people who are too much on the all the all make heads or you know Africans were the first this or the other, I'm like, have you really taken in the full immensity of the con continent before you want to run away to all these outskirts? So yeah, that's that's my thought of that. 
<laughs> in the chat. Thank you, Time Zone. In the chat, Marcus Gavi is away. He says the guy fails to understand that folks are brought in from other countries to do work. Barbados did it with Guyanese. Uh, she goes on to say, Europeans were high on genocide in that time. They needed bodies by any means necessary. The learning curve, that's, re that's a revolutionary matron. She says, many Moors I have met lately say they were never slaves. So do a lot of FBA, that's Foundational Black Americans. Trigger Happy 262 says, well, that, that's mostly the problem. It isn't to say that slavery and colonialism shouldn't be part of historical consciousness, but focusing on this is why this dude exists. Lastly, Marcus Gavi is the way he says, so the door of no return, quote unquote, door of no return was built for 20 folks. Question mark, question mark. Hey, Gassim Up is in the chat. Gassim Up, Gassim Up says, peace family. Peace to you, Gassim Up. Hope all is well. Um, um, we have someone I think is new here, Kanini. Kanini says, so if we were here before Columbus and those natives throughout North and South America were black. And now we know that the origin of people started in Africa. Where did the natives come from? Africa, right? So he's, he's, he's still connecting back to, uh, to the continent. Um, let's go to, who did I speak to already? Let's go to Kevin Carey 42 on this. What say you to all of this? Yeah, this is my observation, man. Mental illness in our community is <laughs> at an all-time high. And what kind of crack was this guy smoking, man? You know, hold on a second. On my laptop. But I felt in cringe and embarrassed that this guy was out there spewing this thing. And, and as Tanzan was saying, let's just be real with what he was saying. He he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be African, you know. Right. You know, it's like he was all over the place. First, he was, he was saying that the, the Romans were, were needed food. He had to come, he, so I, I was confused. They say he had, to, he had to come from America to feed the Romans, something like that. I, I was just confused listening to this guy. But as I said, man, mental illness is a. It, it, we're, we're in a very dire situation in, in our community, man. And, and it, that has to be worked on. But I pass the mic. Oni, what say you? Oh yeah. So what I would say is, you know, Hotep Jesus is is pretty known for his, you know, his shenanigans. Um, if nothing else. I don't really know much else to, you know, like as far as Hotep Jesus is concerned, he's always been um kind of a, a, a like he, he knows how to make an appeal. Like, you know, he knows how to get viral, you know? Uh and so this is the kind of stuff that gets you viral in America, unfortunately, you know, thus this idea of, of, you know, hidden figures in a sense, you know, uh, hidden colors or as, uh, I think, uh, Tariq Nasheed was originally going to call it secret N words. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, like it's, 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 it's just a nice idea to people when like they come up with this idea that, you know, the government's lying to them. You know the public fool system was tricking them, and so you know you just take it to another extreme. I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of what gets people going is going to be extremism, you know, uh, one way or the other. Like I said about the the economy thing, that was one of the extremism. The other extremism is like, you know, like let's say you go to like gender shit, you know, like sexuality shit and then you know if somebody comes out and and like if a white person comes out and says i think we should be able to marry animals right like like if you say that on a podcast it's it's a viral moment you know mm -hmm. uh people all over are gonna be like i told you you know it's a slippery slope you know blah blah blah, blah. so like what hotel hotel jesus like literally wrote a book over how to go viral you know uh one of the things that got him popular was i think during the BLM, like the height of the BLM movement, he uh, went to a Starbucks or something and demanded that they give him a free drink for reparations or something like that. I don't know. But they gave him a free drink and he recorded it. And the the you know, the Republican media, uh, you know, the Fox News and them, 
they like made him an instant celebrity to show how silly liberals are and, and that kind of stuff. So like like he pe- peeped game from there, and then this is just kind of the continuation. You know, it's not really something to take seriously. I don't think anybody should take it seriously. I think I think there is some merit in the idea that some African people traveled, but I think you know Marcus Garvey uh, is the way to free your minds. Uh, kind of pointed out that you know there's literal structures in Africa uh, that that, re- that that represent that sort of human theft. You know, like human trafficking is a thing right now. Um, it's been a thing. Like it was definitely something that happened. And you know, for somebody to sit there and kind of just be a buffoon, um, you know, it that's their shtick. That's the, that's what works for them. Um, but you know, as the Mr. Untouchables point, you know, Joe Rogan is doing what Joe Rogan should be doing. You know, Joe Rogan, like one, this right here is more viral than a black person, you know, a black scholar coming on and telling you. Hey, everything that you know, like, you know, you know, the slave, you know, you know, that human trafficking was a thing. And I'm just going to tell you, yeah, it was a thing like that's boring. Right. Um, And two, like Joe Rogan should not represent the best of the black race. He should rep, but he could should represent the best of the white race because he's a white man, you know, and and it's just the same. If if I mean, we kind of get our kicks out of, you know, like if if Dr. Clark debates some 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 amazing white scholar but sometimes uh and that's fine but that that comes from our complex you know these white folk do not have a complex when it comes to black folk in the same sense like they understand we put up some black doofy and that's more propaganda like that's better for our propaganda than if we as as white people you know then then how we act where we put up a, a, a white scholar you know, and then we like, ah, look, I beat this white scholar. And then sometimes you don't like like what Tariq Nasheed did, you know, where he just gets clowned by a white scholar. And it's just like, damn, you know, why did you why did you even do that? You know, uh, so that's a that's a thing that I, I could probably say about that. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go to uh, Urzuli. Urzuli, you've heard every thing everyone on the panel had to say and you see what's being said in the chat. What say you to this? Does the Atlantic slave trade make economic sense? Well, well, to me, it doesn't make sense. But I'm not going to sit there and say that didn't, they didn't have any slaves that didn't come from Africa, like he says. But at the end of the day, this man, he said that, and he's, he said that originally, even if they came from Africa, they were, we were here before. So it's funny how we pick and choose what to throw out and what to take. This man who has come oppressed us, destroyed us, killed us, told us we came from Africa and told us that all of us, all the slaves came from Africa and you guys take it hook, line, and singer. Yes, we all come from Africa. This man comes and says common sense. So if you listen to John Henry Clark, so John Henry Clark is a pseudoscience too, but Darwin, Charles Darwin is not a pseudoscience, right? The guy who invented evolution, the super racist that all oh, y'all follow, y'all believe y'all come from monkeys. He's not pseudo, right? But Ivan's been certain my pseudo, right? So it's funny how a lot of these all black people, oh no, we gotta change. But the the man who wrote your history book is telling you this, you take a hook like and sinker. Yes, we all came from Africa as slaves. The man is not saying that. The man is this man is not saying that that we didn't originally come from. He's saying that yo, we were here before all of this, and we were made slaves here. How is that hard to believe? Like he said, why would you take why would you take millions of people from another country, pay money to get them over here? What kind of boat they had? Do you know how many people how many people 12 million? And what boat? Those boats across the Atlantic, the most vicious ocean I've heard of all, not even across the Pacific, across the Atlantic. So unless unless 12 million came and 40 million died. So I'm just saying that, like, why is this so hard to even, oh, he's a buffoon, he's this and that. So all, Charles Darwin is a known racist. 
He created the book of evol he, he, evolution theory. Yeah, I all believe in that shit. If, we, if, 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 if you go by the original name of his book was The Origin of the Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of a Favorite Race and the Struggle of Life. His cousin, his cousin's name is Francis Galton, another racist who invented eugenics. But they, they, they're not pseudo, right? But Because this man right here is using, is saying that he doesn't think that all of us came from there as slaves. But it's a thing. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Let's not, we, we, oh, the same people you claim oppressed you and enslaved you, but you believe what they told you. So that's all I have to say. I just, to me, I, I mean, I'm not going to agree totally with him and say that there were, like, there's a minimal, but I do believe this This kind of makes sense to me in the saying that, yo, why would we go over there if we could come here and enslave the people here? And again, he ju they just showed you the all mix. I believe that we are the Native Americans. I don't believe nothing, no Taya Wak, all of this. If they exist, they were black like us. So the all mix head, and he just said, like, he just said there were Egyptian monuments found in Ohio. Not him, but the guy, Joe Rogan's person. So if the Egyptian could be here, why can't we would have been here before Columbus and lost a war here? Like, how is that crazy to believe? But y'all believe in the in fucking Charles Darwin's evolution theory that we all came from a fucking monkey. That's all I got to say about that. I'm going to allow uh, folks to have a free fall. You guys can comment to what Zulia to say just now. First of all, wait, wait, wait. Before you do that, before you do that, before, that, before we do that, wait, hold on a second. Who mentioned Charles Darwin? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> like, what? No, I said that so we, we, no, he didn't mention Charles, Charles Darwin. I'm saying that this brother mentioned a couple of people who studied couple of black people who studied Egyptology or whatever, and people on the child are telling them, oh, oh now nah, those are people are, are, are just retards. They're, they're pseudo. But Charles Darwin, a racist piece of shit, he's not pseudo, right? I said Charles Darwin. I yeah, Charles but why, Darwin. why are we talking about Charles Darwin? Like, what does that got to do with anything? I just, somebody on the chat, y'all yeah, yeah, quick to, to, to shit on black scholars talking about they pseudo. This fucker Charles Darwin is a non fucking racist. And y'all believe his theory. But who said anything about Charles Darwin, though? Oh, my. All right. Um, all right. Who else wants to comment to what Urzuliism had to say? I, I would like to have a crack in it. Go ahead. But first, um, the person you mentioned, um, Ivan Van Sertema. Ivan Van Sertema would never, ever make the claim that the slave trade never happened. In, it, in his book, you know, they came before Columbus. He said that Africans were he, well. His 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 supposition, based on the evidences that was found, was it was more probable than not that African people would have come to the the um the Americas the Americas prior to Columbus. Granted, I give you that. You know, I'm not taking that away. But to suggest that these people were in the the large numbers. The large numbers that this this brother on this panel is suggesting is we need to have more evidence to 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 create that nar that that particular narrative, and also if they were here, they would have left more evidences that they were here. You know what I mean? It's like we are what we are proposing is that the Africans didn't write write themselves, and they would have written and left much evidence to the fact that they came to the Americas because they, they were literate. You know, I, I know we go with the narrative that Africans are storytellers and they don't, they were not literate, but that's not true. They were literate. So they would have left much evidence to the contrary of them being in the Americas and the large numbers this guy is proposing. And what, that's just... What more evidence did he leave? Did, did you not see the all make heads? I, I'm not. I'm not dismissing the fact that the whole all my heads was there. I'm saying what I'm saying is that uh, when Ivan Van Sertema, what he said was, I think Mansa Musa brother, or Abu Bakar 
his brother, Abu Bakr, his brother, when he came, when he would have thought to came to the Americas and made an impact into the Americas, more evidence, more evidence would have been left to suggest that when we talking about numbers, we talking about large populations of African people being in, in, in this part of the Western world, that evidence just is not there. What makes, what, what makes it economically more sense though? To fight yeah. to beat people here or to go back and collect people and bring people here? Say that again. What makes more economically sense? What makes what's make what how much money how much money do you keep in your pocket more? To come over here or to go fight on the west coast of Africa, bring some people here, and then fight more people over here. No, okay. So now now we talk now what we're talking about is North America. We're talking about North America and the economic system that existed in North America. And when you're talking about bringing people to the Americas, when you talk about economic sense, if I am able to bring a labor force into the Americas and force them to work for free for generations, to me, that would, that would make much economic sense as opposed to going to the continent and fighting wars and staying there and having to pay, you have to pay for the military, you have to pay for the, to feed them, to house them, to maintain them, to exist on that continent. You know what I mean? To, to, to bring the resources back to the Americas, as opposed to just bringing a slave population here and making them work for free for hundreds of years. To me, that'd make more economic sense. But I, I just I just would say, when we talk about, as far as the scholarship is concerned, I have a problem with the scholars that he would have mentioned, in particular, the Phil Valentines. And because Phil, Phil Valentine goes off on a Native, uh, Native American stuff too. I don't agree with that, 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 um, that, that logic or, or scholarship. And, and you, you have a right to disagree. So you, so you believe in what the white man told you? Well, to some degree, all of us agree. Okay. To okay. some so degree. So you, no, believe, no. so you believe what the white man told you about your own history? Okay, all right, cool. A about my own history. To some degree, all of us agree. To some degree, off off of what have been what has been said about history, and history sometimes you are right. You are absolutely right. It has its own biases. Some of history has uh, um, just is is as plain as day. It doesn't have the biases. And also, and also, um, black people had their own scholars. They had scholars here, and they also had African scholars as well. African John, John John Henry Clark told you we were here before Columbus, bro. I've never well, I've never heard him say that. What I've heard, but the book, I, but the book bro, it's called We Were Here Before Columbus. No, we no, we that, that was written by Ivan Van Sertum. Oh my god, yo, bro. Oh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get the exact name. Okay, so so all, all I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that yes, we do have scholars in the West, but we also have African scholars. Who would have written about their own histories and would have would have would have uh, probably would have occurred in their in their societies and 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 um and nations as well. So I wouldn't discount what they have said as well. I wouldn't discount them because they have a story to tell as to what went on in their in their um, in their nations. So I wouldn't discount them. You know what I mean? I think that sometimes you could say. Um, the, the Western scholars, and we believe in the Western scholars, but we also have African scholars as well who have written on paper and created books too. So we, sh should we just dismiss what they say? I, I, like I say, I, I think that I understand what you're saying, and I don't easily just easily dismiss the fact that Africans did explore all around the world because we are all around the world, all around the world. You know what I mean? That's why I don't get into the, I, I don't get into the idea of this whole nativism because we are we we are the, if we are the first man who is who would, would is to inhabited the world of course this world is ours first I, I agree with that but to suggest that the slave trade never happened I think that that's a reach he didn't he he, he didn't say this the slave trade I'm, I don't think he's saying the slave trade never happened I think he's saying the slave trade the way it was told to us never happened he I don't think he's never said that we were not slaves in America, what he's trying to say is that they made a slave here versus uh, 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 I'm there. Anyway, what I'm going to say, people who built those those pyramids, people who built those things, you mean to tell me these people couldn't travel here? Like, let's use common sense. So the pe we could we can right now can't build those pyramids, but you mean to tell me people who built pyramids 
and Africa and, 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 and lower Ethiopia or whatever in Kush, the Nubians couldn't do this. He, he just said they found, I, uh, he, he just said they found uh, 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 Egyptian stuff in Ohio and in the Grand Canyon. And there's other evidence that they, they don't want to tell can you. Can I ask something when you're done? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, so um, the question is whether the Africans who, they all eventually became slaves, right? Whether they were brought here by the ships or they came here voluntarily on an exploration mission or they were here before. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's what I think, yeah. I, think, I think that's what he said. He's, he's like, it's, okay. it's, what, go ahead, go ahead. So, so if I get it uh, right, there were some who were already here, and then uh, they were uh, civilized, they knew navigational skills and traveling and so forth, and they had some sort of African civilization here in, in America, South and North America. And then um, the Europeans came, and um, either they conquered them and made them slaves or extinct, or they brought some more people, but eventually, whether they were here before or they were brought afterwards, eventually there was no difference between those who were here before, the Africans who were here before, and those who were brought afterwards. Is that correct? They were all made into slaves, right? Yeah, I think that's what he's saying. He's trying to say Okay, that. so so it seems to me, you know, not a very important point to, to argue on because whether they were brought here voluntarily or not voluntarily, the result is still the same. All we're arguing is whether they left Africa on their own will or not. And But the fact is they, were, they still came from Africa and they were still enslaved as Africans. And after a while, there was no difference between, oh, well, you know, my, my grandparents came here on a ship, whereas yours came on the, you know, the top of a ship versus the deck of a ship i mean can someone explain to me why why is it it's important how they they came here versus it's where they came from? it's important because they've been it's important because if we came here prior to that and we built all this civilization in teotihuacan mexico and all the way in peru all those pyramids it does matter it means that we were not slaves. It means that we were great people that came from Africa a long, long time ago and built a whole another civilization here. It does matter. But we were great in Africa as well. So if we were great in Africa and built the pyramids in Egypt, which are far more superior than the, any pyramids built anywhere around the world, including the Mayan and the Aztec ones. So if you're going to take your greatness from you know, the best of people who built civilizations, then why is the, is it a problem if you say that? Oh well, we are from uh, because from the truth matters. Because the truth matters. Yeah, but if the truth is that you came from Africa originally and that greatness that's that not you what, that's the not pyramid, what we're being taught. The question is, the answer is that's not what we're being ta taught, and then the educational system and all over and 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 and, and, philosophy and, and, and scholarship. We're not being told that they've been telling us that we came from Africa as slave, that the slave that we were sold by as slaves and came here. They didn't say okay. we were here first. I think it matters. Okay. Let's um okay. so it was voluntary. Okay. Let's let's hear from the forecast on this. Forecast is still there. If you are, you're muted. If you are. Um only did you want to add something to this, Chris? Oh yeah. So uh well that's what I'm so I even if this were true, and it's not, obviously. But even if it were true, I'm kind of confused why Erzuli, who I'm, who's like Haitian, why is he, you know, saying we and all that kind of stuff? Because, you know, clearly, if nothing else, we know the people of Haiti were from Africa. And we know the people in Jamaica were from Africa. We know the Caribbean people from Africa. I mean, if the quote unquote African American wants to claim some sort of indigenous, indigenous ancestry, um, that might make a little bit like it doesn't make any sense really, but I could understand that claim because I think that's what um, what this guy is trying to say. But as far as you know, the Caribbean Africans are concerned, um, why is it that um, like like why why is this a, why is this an issue for us? I guess, bro. I okay, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. Even Haitian people were here first. We're black. We're, we're, we're like, I'm not just saying because American um, blacks, uh, the Native American. I'm saying Haitian blacks 
all the Native Americans also. That's what I'm saying. Well, all right. Well, well, the thing with Haiti is that, you know, by the time of the Haitian Revolution, like, it's well known that, like, I think it was, like, two-thirds of them just came from Haiti. I'm sorry, just came from Africa. You that's know, even, they, like... That's what they told you. You don't know that. That's what they told you. Well, yeah, that's what Dessaline told you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, not what, that's not what Dessaline told you. Because, you know... Uh, what? He named. He named. You know what? The, what you know why he killed. You know why he called his um his army, Polish. No, no, no. Find out why he called his his army. Find out what, what he called his army, and then come back. He didn't call well, them I mean, Africans. Call them the Aztec warriors. <laughs> All right, he got he got he got the uh, yeah. Uh, are you trying? I'm not 100 sure, but Toyin, uh, somebody who like more or less uh like taught him things of back home was like literally one of the Dahomey uh, like white warriors that we are uh we're all kind of disgusted about apparently but like she literally has ties in Africa and and if I'm yeah and Desolines was born in Africa right um so it's just it's just uh you saw his birth certificate or that's what they told you you know who wrote you know who you well, know who I'm pretty sure he he mentions it a few times okay. um but like a lot of like yeah, I don't think anybody denies. I mean, there's like a whole what's, that whole what, what, connection. What's, cra what's crazy with, to me is how hard you guys, you guys claim that the people who's been oppressing us, who've been all doing all of this, they the one that gave you your freaking history, bro. And you take yeah. and you fighting for it right now. Well, look, look, I'll say this. You know, this, not, you know it not. it comes back to you know when you say what's the difference between science and pseudoscience. You know, it kind of comes back to, am I going to believe you or my lion eyes? You know, it's like when you go to Africa, you kind of notice that everybody looks the same like you, you know? So if you weren't like, like, even if you never, even if you never, like, even if you thought, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm indigenous to another part of the world, right? Like, you know you weren't indigenous to China. Cause when you go to China, you know, hardly anybody looks like you, you know, you're not indigenous to England. Cause when you go to England, hardly anybody looks like you, but when you go to Africa and you notice, Hey, you know what? That's the same phenotype. That's the matching phenotype. It's really not that bizarre. Now I would lend to the, you know, the pos not the possibility, but the reality that of course there was some sort of exchange between Africa and um in Europe prior to I mean, sorry Africa and America prior to 1492. I think that's um I think that that's pretty evident. But the idea that uh the vast majority of uh, people of quote unquote African descent in America are not actually descended from people who were transplanted or or kidnapped or traded or whatever you want to call no, it. No, we're not saying oh. that. He's not saying that. He's saying yo, we're focusing on whether we were taken there or we were already here and then imprisoned and turned into slavery. That's what he Yeah, the, the people who were already here, what it, the, the blacks who were already here were not that large a population. Right? So how do you know that they weren't? Well, because what 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 you know from uh, from what, 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 the, what the history book told you, his history books. That's exactly where you're getting that from. Well, also the fact that there is a native population. Those are the that, Mon those are the Mongolians. They could have the, came yeah, there. After. They, they, they were all here. Yeah, they could have came there after. At, at came the there after of, what? At the end, of, at the end, of, at the end of the day, at the end. This is where did they come from? Where did they come from? When? So show me the big Olmec heads that look like the Mongolians. Well, I, I'm pretty sure they're well the, again. So, so the Olmecs are are an older civilization. Uh so they're like going back two thousand, three thousand years or something. Uh, but right, right. but what you're talking about is essentially you're saying that the native population that we know of as the Native Americans, like where did they come from, and where like where were they from? You know what I mean? So, like, in your narrative, if there was only black people here and then white people came here and enslaved the black people, where did these Native Americans come from? The Mongolians. Actually, yeah, actually. Where, where did the Mongolians come from? When did they, when did they show up? Hey, I don't know, bro. 
Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. So it's like in, in the narrative, it's like we all know that they are the indigenous people. But you're saying, no, they're not the indigenous people. It was mostly only black people. And that's fine. But then it's like, well, then where the hell do these people come from? You know, it, it just doesn't fit in the narrative. Whereas it comes into the, am I going to believe you or my lying eyes? But show me, but, show me, show me the statues that the Mongolians put up that were there before the, show me their statues, bro. Show it to me. Well, that's the thing. Not everybody builds massive statues. Oh, right, think, right. Okay. Well, I think that the Olmec situation, I mean, I, as far as I understand, I, I believe that, um, I think, I think, well, I, I couldn't say much about the Olmecs. I, I do think that there might have been uh, some connection between some like African elites at one point traveling to uh, Africa a long time ago, uh, like during the time of Egypt, possibly. Uh, but again, it's like it's a, it's so far removed from the current story, and and it, it just wouldn't necessarily relate to uh, North America in the same way. Uh, now I could I could mention that there is uh, there was a people in uh, what's it called uh, in uh, North America called the Lakota people and they do kind of follow a spiritual system that is reminiscent of an African spiritual system but they're also Native Americans you know so there could have been an interchange and an exchange. It could be that the Olmecs were destroyed by the uh, Native Americans at one point. Uh, to a large extent, Native Americans were by and large categorized as quote unquote savages, just the same as you probably wouldn't find, uh, you know, ancient German statues, monoliths, uh, uh, face monoliths, just like you wouldn't find that in England either. Uh, you know, they like technically they would have been categorized as savages. The Germans would have been categorized as savages. The you know the Visigoths, if you will, the 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 Native Americans, so on and so forth, and so they could have destroyed, a uh, quote unquote ancient African uh, civilizations. But again, the 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 tie in with regard to the uh, African population just isn't there. And what's more, it's like to dismiss, you know, every African scholar of the time, uh, of the time period in and during slavery where there are tons of African people testifying for themselves that, hey, yeah, these people look like they just came off the boat. Um, like they, they, they understood that there, were, that there were populations coming from Africa. And then when you go to Africa, you understand that there's a whole depopulation process. I was in these, um, these, these, uh, these castles and I saw the rooms where they held African people. I saw the I saw the, the 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 ports where they uh, carry the ships off. To say that this is all just some sort of scheme to trick twenty first century people about what happened in the seventeenth um, century, it's just it, it's kind of like like honestly, it kind of borderlines on ridiculous, you know. Uh, I mean, I get the idea that hey, you know, the government's probably lying about a lot of stuff, and that's 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 fine. But, but it's, you know, Martin Delaney points out the, the, their African roots. Uh, Dessalines points out their African roots. Uh, uh, you know, like, no, like just you all have, over. You, know, you, have no you have no evidence that Dessalines points out his natural. He called, I, ha he I called, have, he called his, he called his army, the army of the indigenous. That's why he called his army. The army yeah. of the indigenous. So what are you talking about, bro? Rizuli, Rizuli, can I ask you a question? Do you think that Mayan culture and and um, Aztec culture is synonymous with African culture? Do I think Aztec, Aztec culture is synonymous with... Aztec with... And, and the Mayan culture of, of Mexico and on those places, do you think that's synonymous with African culture? Do you think that they are the same? Yeah. Yes? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, I get where you're coming from because in in, in, in Mexico and, and those Southern American countries, you still see remnants of the Mayan and Aztec culture that exists within those societies. But if you go to Haiti, you see remnants of West African culture. So if you believe 
that the Afri the Mayans and the Aztec culture is synonymous with African culture. I understand where you're coming from, and I can't I can't dispute that. That's that's the belief that you stand on, and I, I can't get into that kind of argument tonight. What I'm I what, I, what I'm saying is, is that the people who gave us all this transatlantic slavery that we all came from slave all this are the same people that have been oppressing us for centuries for centuries upon centuries. Now, if there's a new theory. I don't understand how you guys are so, oh, he's a coon, not, not, not a coon, oh, he's pseudo, or oh, he's crazy. But you quick to believe, you, you you believe in the theory out of Africa, which was given to you by, by, by those same oppressors. You believe in the evolution, which was given to you by the same oppressors. The out of Africa theory is not based off of oppression. The out of Africa theory is based off of the best evidence because the, no, the, best, the best evidence invited, in, 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 invented or, or taken by the by, by the same guy that oppressed you. So, 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 so you believe you believe in a polygenesis, like man came uh, with the man as we know it, as me and you are talking right now, I'm, was I'm, coming I'm, out of different different. Hold on, let me finish. Man as we know it right now was born out of different places in the world it wasn't just africa that's that's what you believe it was a polygenesis where man came from i'm saying i'm saying i'm questioning everything that they ever taught me as a kid the same people i'm questioning everything all i'm saying is yo the same people that this did all this my offer to us is the same people that gave us that same theory okay okay let's, um let's have from lero lero what say you okay so i got First, first off, I just want to say to say that everybody got their history from the schoolhouse. You know, the schoolhouse didn't tell me that I was African. That's just what it was growing up in the fam. You know what I mean? We knew that we were Africans. We, doc, you know, tried our best as we could, you know, given the slavery, you know, to preserve our history. But we knew we was from Africa. We got ties to Africa. Like, it's just for generations now. That wasn't nothing that ever got taught to me ever in the schoolhouse. I was home training that reminded us where we from, you know, and whatnot. So like everybody's not just being told things by the white man and we just going off and taking it and believing it. Like, no, it, we got some agency and we know we Africans. My thing is this though, is like, if what, what benefit does the white man get, does society get from lying about you being native? That's, that's just my whole thing. If he's going to lie, what was the purpose? There's gotta be a purpose. You know, I mean, unless you just think they're just lying for no reason, you know, like I, I I don't get it. So that's one question. Why? What is the purpose of the lie to say that, you know, no, we're going to tell them they all came that they all came on the boats, you know, which goes against all types of materialist and economic, you know, evidences. You know, you, you, you got the triangular trade and we ignoring all those economic advancements and how they institutionalize you know, uh, slavery to advance Europe and the West. Like it was the most lucrative industry in the world at one point. Like I, I, so, I mean, I'll never like under exaggerate the transatlantic slave trade. So, but my also other thing is too, now, where do you go from here? You native now what, you know, you're not from Africa. We was actually already here. So that means you're not African or you just an African that was here. I don't, you know, at what point, cause then when people get into that whole, out of Africa theory, you know, well, then everybody can claim Africa. And that's why they letting colonizers be Africans too. Kind of, Af no, no. Like at what point does somebody, you know, since you were removed from Africa now, cause you was already here prior to the slave trade. So does that mean you're not African no more? And if you're not, then what's your objective now? What does this mean for you now? Because I would think, you know, your identity, you know, has, uh, would be a sense of direction you know, allegiance or whatnot for your life, either politically, uh, culturally, spiritually, whatnot. You know, what does that mean for you now? You know, that's that's just my question. Oh, well, actually, let me add something. Let me just add something. Wait, Urzuli, just just to clarify, if if this is true that uh, people were already here voluntarily, are you going to stop saying that Africans sold us? Cause if that's the case, like I'm, I'm with it, you know. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying is that I believe I could understand his argument, and I'm saying that maybe the majority of us did not come from Africa; that we were already here. I'm not so basically, we didn't, well, Africans didn't sell us. You saying? Did you hear what I said? I said I believe the majority of us were already here. Maybe there's a percentage of us that got sold from over there. 
So I'm so, so the majority of us can't claim that we were sold. Is that what you're saying? No, but we could claim that we were slaves. But not that we were sold by the Africans. So how come let me ask you a question? How come the Africans, when you ask them on the continent, they say they were never slaves? No, I'm asking you if yeah. if we could say that if we can't claim it anymore, like because I, I mean that's I'm cool with that. If you if you don't wanna like I think you you did before say, oh, why did you know they sold us or something? So now you can't say that because we were already here, right? Oh, I, I never, I, I, I just, I said there was a, maybe there's a portion of us that was sold, and maybe most of us. But the there. majority of us can't say it. You saying? Yeah, I, I, I don't believe the majority should say that. We were All sold. right, cool. No, I'm good. Yeah, you're right. Show sure, whatever. So, so I'm just saying that when we were on other people's podcasts, we we spoke from people from from the motherland. They don't even hear nothing about being slaves, or about slavery from Europeans. Where are the stories that were created, like the 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 the, the, the oral tradition that were created that told us about uh, about being slaves or selling each other? Yeah, so, sure, bro, so, man, it's all good, man. Don't worry about it. I'm not even like, no, I'm, 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 like I'm, if I'm, you're I'm, if you believe this, man, cool, man. I'm 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 talking to the young lady. That's it. What's what's the what what's the reason? If we were here, this is our land, so we get to claim it. We get we get to claim it and and, and fight for our land. If they but I mean, you could claim it already, though. Like the whole new you, African you, independence, you with people it? claiming claim the it? land, claiming land. They knew that was Africans, though, but still claiming claim to the land. You know, How because they were enslaved. If, if you were, here. if you were sold, you didn't have to be native to do that, though. If you were, what do you mean? If you were sold, you can't claim the land. If you came from the other coast, you can't claim your ancestors were part of this he land. He came here involuntarily. But I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, you know, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. But I'm saying that's the whole line of like new African independence. And people, and, people, and you're saying that oh, we were taught like people. Yo, a lot of us got our schooling from from this educational system, and they all told us that we were slave brought from Africa. I'm just saying that, bro. The same people. Why would the same people teach you the right thing about yourself? The same people that we claim um, enslaved us from Africa and killed. Why would they tell us the truth? But why would they lie? Why would they lie? What because was the purpose of them they, telling they, a lie? They lie because you don't get to claim the the, the, the Western Hemisphere as yours. Neither do they, and they still did. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, what are you talking about, my guy? They don't they, like. They are, they, not, they, they, no, no, no. they are not claiming it. They but they claimed it. it. <laughs> no need. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, like, what, what are you talking about? Who, whose country is they America? Are not claiming it. Whose country is America? What do you? What I'm saying, like you, you don't get. Oh, no, whose country is America? It's well, I guess the Euros now because they had the guns. So then, they, so, but you said they didn't claim it; they just have it. But because in their history, they said what they did to the natives and the who are here. Okay, so but they have it. So what's the what's the point? So you saying all they did was take the land? So basically, you saying this? Like, let's. See, I wanted to move on, actually, but you saying that. You had, you know, your we part of uh only, only we could move on. It's okay. I'm just shit. saying that we, we we seem to believe that we yeah, man. We government. all believe the white man except for you, but you believe in yeah, we got it. What I'm no, I'm just saying that there could be another theory, bro. Yeah, sure. There could be another theory that just happened to be from Hotep Jesus. It's Make not from Hotep. First of all, he didn't come with that. Go read a book called The Rock Cry. The, yeah, the man, Rock but Cry again, out. Martin Delaney. Uh, David Walker, all these other African people just happen who happen to have known enslaved Africans, and, and like you know, you have ancestors, you have the African burial ground named at like named by black people. You got uh, what does that mean, the African burial ground that means that African people named like black enslaved people made a, a, a burial ground whoa, whoa. and called it African whoa. burial ground. Where, themselves. Where? where? We, we it's in New Street. York City. What are you talking about? Resorism. Go to Chamber Street by uh. Exactly. It's right on the Wall Street. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. You got the African Methodist Church. You got you got uh all these sort of these, these testimonies. You got people in Jamaica speaking Twi right now. You got all over, and then you want to believe. What some people just because you think the white boy lied to you, so everything he says must be false, and that's fine. But you know, yeah, let's move on because this is, yeah. Oh, you said the African burial ground. You said they were buried here. What is that? I don't understand. They named their burial site the African burial ground. 
Okay. Those like, are- what more? What more? How else are you going to communicate? Hey, I'm African, right? Except for naming your burial site African burial ground. That was that was that was named by people by people now. That wasn't named no. That was a private private burial ground by them that's what they named back then they named it back then it it was discovered recently and they were like holy shit and they looked at the 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 name of it because it was named because it was buried under chamber street and they were like what african burial ground so explain to me how that 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 whole area in lower manhattan that's all a lot of the africans were buried on the outskirts of the city back in the days that whole there's a lot of african americans that claim that city they were Native Americans. That their grandmothers told us they were Native Americans. So, you, how do we explain those 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 uh, anecdotal? Um... Yeah, fine, man. Okay, but like again, when 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 they're talking about Native Americans, and when everybody's talking about Native Americans, they're talking about people with straight hair. This dude's hair is 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 kinky. This is the four C hair texture. The, the Native Americans did not have four C hair, and the only population on the planet Earth with four C hair are African people. Yo, when you look at go go when you look at the the the, the all max and you look at the uh and because that's a helmet that they wear. When they Bro, wear- the only population on the planet with four C here are African people. Every other population on the planet, including the Native Americans, have straight hair. And even in the documentation, the Mongolian, when people, the Mongolian Native Americans, the so-called Native even Americans. the documentation where people say, "Hey, these Native Americans look like Africans." Even when they say they say they look like Africans, except they have straight hair. No, well, I don't know what you're talking about. The 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 the, the, the um the Olmex, When you look at the, the back of their head, they have the same haircuts, the same Af- the same styles as Af- as West Africans. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, dude, um, but the the, the the Olmex are not the same population. Like like you're talking about one population. In oh. North America, from three thousand years ago, you, it's like it's like bringing up the ancient Egyptians and saying, "Well, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians." Like, yeah, okay, you got one civilization uh, from three thousand years ago. That's it. And, and if you just keep citing, if you're just like ancient, ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt, or dark ticket, dark ticket, dark ticket. Okay, it 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 gets tired. There's a whole. It's a whole continent. The continent is huge. North America, South America, the whole continent is huge. You're talking about one civilization, right, from 3,000 years ago. So, so yeah, maybe that one civilization from 3,000 years ago has some African contact. That's a possibility. But to say that the entire population of North America and South America, based off of one piece of information and, what, 10 statues? I don't know. Right, it's just it's just it's just ridiculous and it's pseudoscientific. And and just to put it into the thing, uh uh I, I couldn't find the, the reference, but Ivan Van Sertema himself set wrote another book after they came from Columbus to say, I don't like how you guys are using my book because I didn't say any of that shit. And you're and you're and you're making me seem like a not serious scholar because you're taking some stuff and you're just uh, you're just abusing my freaking literature. So, so Ivan Van Sertema himself Yo, said, even, "Stop using my shit this way." And so, even, like that's it. Even if you look at the 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 the, 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 the conquistador Columbus, when they came and the description of the people there, they said they had Negro features. So, not I'm not talking about. Yeah, with straight like, hair, it doesn't matter. They had straight hair. How many black folk you know? With straight, straight all hair, these bro? all of these I, black I, I, folk you see. It, have four C kinky hair. Everybody knows this, and the Native Americans all have straight hair. And when people and when Black Americans say, "Hey, I might have Native American ancestry," they're t- they're saying that because they feel like their hair isn't uh, completely kinky. They always say, "Oh, I got good hair because I'm mixed with so on and so forth." And and they used to say that back in the day, just to not say they were mixed with white folk. They would say, "Oh, I'm mixed with uh, uh, Native Americans." But but the reality is that it possibly does some mixed ancestry. But the indication for them saying that they were Native Americans was that they didn't have four C here. This dude's sitting right in front of us with 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 straight out of Africa here, like like you. There's, there's nothing Native American about this, and everybody's going to show you the same documentation. Anytime they said, "Hey, they look like Negroes with their features. They had dark skin. They had this. They even had like 
Some of them even had those the, the flat nose, all that kind of stuff, whatever. But they always had straight hair. Let's bring in um, Gas Them Up. Gas Them Up, how are you this week? I'm good. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I I don't touch the whole identity thing for, you know, the um, Native American, whatever, whatever. I think everybody should be entitled to believe what it is that they want to believe. However, it does seem that uh, the the Native American angle, for me, when I take a step back, it, it's a reparations strategy because if you claim Africa, Africa is poor, allegedly, right now. So uh, Tariq Nasheed was just on DJ Academic saying he wants to get $20 trillion from the United States government for um, people who are genealogically um, traced to foundational Black Americans. And so if you have any argument that says you are taken from Africa, then, you know, you no longer have a strength in your argument. But I think there's some half-truths that are there. Um, there was a Native American slave trade, but you know they can't have it both ways. They can't, on one hand, say that the European man um, enslaved them, which they did, but then at the same time also say that there was germ warfare, right, with the smallpox blankets, the exposure to um, you know syphilis and and European diseases, which um, they couldn't contend with, and they were dying out in droves. They don't mention the Salamanca debates in Spain that anyone can read up on, um, and then you know just certain things that you start to press them to say, hey, okay, so if that's the case, how did you know Ogun, Eshu, and and and, and things like Akara J. Um, and certain foods leave West Africa and Central Africa and end up in the Americas. They can't account for that because there's no Native American version of Akara J. Um, so when you start to ask them, hey, listen, okay, great, you're Native American. Can you show me what you do that's Native American today, right? Um, so for example, uh, People pour out libation in films. You see uh, Ice Cube pouring out libation. They can't show you a Native American practice of pouring out libation, but you can definitely find that in Africa. So there's so many things that, you know, when you start to press them, they start waffling. And that's why I don't waste the time pressing them. But I do think it's a reparations um, strategy. It's because in their eyes, Africa has nothing to offer them. So it's much better to construct a new concept to say, hey, we are so-called indigenous or native to this land, and it's much easier to, you know, get the check from this rich nation called the United States than those backwater African nation. Thank you for that, gas them up. Um, if there's no last words on that prompt, Let's go to Shoot the Breeze, talk number eight. I'm going to make eight the last uh, prompt for tonight. I'm a little bit tired now. Um, Shoot the Breeze, 